I'm here in Boston for about 48 hours before I have to head back to New York. And this is a continuation of my series where I try to figure out if I want to move out of New York. And, you know, Boston, I've had a lot of friends come through and say they love it. So I figured, why the hell not? So I really want to go out and like see the sights and see what Boston has to offer. And, you know, if it could actually tempt me to leave New York. Quincy Market is the perfect place to kick off this trip, and I'm not just saying that because I didn't eat breakfast, but yeah, it is a food lover's paradise. Quincy Market has been a staple in Boston since the early 19th century. You're going to find a little bit of everything under the sun here, from traditional New England dishes to dishes from all over the world. The funny thing is, I'm going to ride back to one of the first places I passed. I walk down the entire way, just go right back. I may be dumb, I couldn't find somewhere to sit inside, so I'm um, outside, but I don't think I'm dumb. I mean, that might be besides the point, but everyone else is sitting out here too, so I think I'm in the right spot. I'm gonna say I might start to attract the local fauna. Yeah. I mean, it was a $20 sandwich, but on all, not bad. Then, as I was walking out, something absolutely magical happened, and the Ben and Jerry were handing out free ice cream and taking photos. So not only did I meet Ben and Jerry, but I got free ice cream too. Filled up with ice cream and joy, I headed over to the location of the Boston Tea Party, and that's where I realized I kind of made a mistake. I did not buy tickets for the museum ahead of time, and it was sold out. So learn from my mistake. If you want to go into the museum, buy tickets ahead of time. If you want a quintessential Boston skyline photo, you should come over to Fan Pier Park. The view is absolutely breathtaking. It's a gorgeous park, and I actually want to try to come back here at night too to get one of the like long exposure night shots. So stay tuned for that. Today is also a very big day for me because I am having my first ever lobster roll. I'm losing my lobster roll virginity today, right now. Let's go. And now you might be saying to yourself, Justin, how have you never had a lobster roll before? You haven't lived until you had a lobster roll. And the answer is very simple. It's just that I'm not much of a seafood person, but like it's such a quintessential dish in my mind in New England that like I had to try it. Okay, I have mentally prepared for this moment. I have run through multiple times. I'm ready, this is very important. This dude is massive. And yes, it was very good. Was it my favorite? Probably not, but I get why there's so much hype around this dish. That was solid, but I am absolutely stuffed. I have food coma. Oh. There's no denying that Boston is a sports city and Fenway is the heart and soul of that city. And I feel like I should give a little context behind this game and why it's special for me. My best friend is a diehard Yankees fan, and I thought it would be hilarious to send her a photo of me rooting against the Yankees at Fenway. I honestly cannot wait to piss off my best friend. It's going to be amazing. I'm so happy. I'm going to get a drink. As any good Long Islander should, I love a good diner and Boston does it right. They have a really strong diner culture here as well. I came to South Street Diner because I heard a lot of great things about it, but honestly, any diner should do. Thank God I'm gonna be walking the Freedom Trail right now because I don't know if I should be proud of myself or disgusted, but I finished that entire breakfast. I am absolutely stuffed. The Freedom Trail starts at the Boston Commons, but before you actually start walking the trail, I recommend that you do check out the Commons a bit. It's really nice. It's actually America's oldest public park, and it looks like a lot of local people like to just sit back, relax, and enjoy the nice weather. Some quick facts about the Freedom Trail is that it is 2.5 miles long, takes you through 16 different sites, starting at the Boston Commons and ending at the USS Constitution. If this brick path leads the entire way of the Freedom Trail, 
be really hard to get lost. But as I say that, I'm sure I'm not about to get lost, so. I ended up walking the trail myself, but you can take a guided tour, um, just basically look out for the guys in Revolutionary War Garb, and uh, yeah, those are the tour guides. I don't know if it's just my morbid sense of humor or whatever, but when we were at the Granary Burial Grounds, I thought it was kind of hilarious how, like, here's the grave of Benjamin Franklin, here's Paul Revere, and here's my living room. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> You're just, your living room is over Revolutionary War graves. That's wild. Nothing says more about America or American freedom than having mini golf right by historical sites. Boston's North End, often called Little Italy, is a vibrant neighborhood known for its rich Italian heritage. These streets are lined with authentic restaurants, bakeries, cafes, and offering everything from fresh pasta to cannolis. Something I'm learning as I travel more and more on my own is just go out and do the things you want to do. Is there a certain event you want to go to? Do it on your own. Go to a nice restaurant? Do it on your own. Don't not do something just because you don't have someone else to do it with. I think a great way to wrap up any Boston trip is with a sail around the Boston Harbor. I'm doing mine at sunset, so hopefully it's nice and gorgeous out there. But on top of that, I think it's just a nice clean way to wrap things up and put things into perspective for your overall trip. I felt it was only fitting to spend my last night here tucked away from the rain in the corner of an Irish pub, a Guinness in hand, reflecting on the whirlwind of 48 hours. The people of Boston are warm and welcoming, with an undeniable pride in their city and it's easy to see why. To me, Boston feels like New York's laid back cousin, a bit more intimate and slower paced, yet still lively and full of things to do. In a way, Boston almost feels like if New York were about 10% more European. Not sure if that makes any sense, but it's how it feels. Would I want to move here? Maybe. Boston has a charm that's hard to resist, but there are other cities to explore, so for now, I'll raise my glass to the city, its people, and the stories that make it unique. Cheers, Boston.